Imagine taking out an entire country with just one shot. We deserved it. We deserve to win. Or sending a dude to the ER in the biggest match of your career. These are the top seven revenge moments in football. And kicking off the list is when Messi took out the greatest goalkeeper of his generation. Way back in 2014, Argentina and Germany faced off in the World Cup final, and the match was tense. Messi and his Argentine teammates tried everything, but they just couldn't cut it. And with just a few minutes left to the end of the extra time, Mario Götze scored for Germany, and they won the World Cup, with Messi in pain. Now, just one year later in 2015, Bayern was facing Barcelona in the Champions League semifinals, and Bayern goalie Manuel Neuer, he was the guy between the sticks for Germany when they dunked Argentina. So when he got picked to run the interview for this match, he made a statement he was about to regret. I will show Lionel Messi who is boss. It's crucial to show authority when you meet on the pitch and show him who's boss. Whoa, the balls on this dude. Messi saw everything was still pretty chill because he had a secret plan in place to answer Neuer's statement. And as soon as the ref hit the whistle, Messi entered beast mode and iced the dude. That second goal is amazing. He legit took out two members of that World Cup winning team with one body move. Neuer was speechless after the game, and I can't even blame him. It's the Messi effect. But at least Neuer and Messi's beef was settled by goals. This next dude sent a guy to the ER on the biggest night of his life. Zinedine Zidane is an absolute legend of the game. After an incredible career, the stage was set for Zizou to have his final game on the biggest stage of all, the World Cup Final. And to make it even better, Zizou was captain of the French team. With just a few minutes in, he gave France the lead with an ice-cold Pananeca. But Italy came back to tie the game, and just when it looked like the two teams won't be able to gain any advantage, the game went into extra time, and with the tension really high, Marco Matarazzi decided to play a little game with Zizou. So he started tugging his shirt, and that's when Zizou turned back and told him, hey, if you want my shirt that bad, I can give it to you after the game. But Matarazzi had something dark in his mind instead and dropped his savage reply. No thanks, I'd rather have your sister instead. Whoa, immediately Zuzu heard those words, he turned back and lost his head. Whoa, that headbutt could have taken Matarazzi's heart out. Zidane got sent off and France ended up losing the game on penalties. But hey, at least he got to see Matarazzi's face when the headbutt came in. Yikes! Matarazzi is a master of the dark arts and his tricks of dirty plays, they've been going on for a long time. But it all came to an end in 2010 after he pissed off the wrong dude and got sent to the hospital. In a league game versus Juventus in 2006, Metarazzi's special task was to keep tabs on Zlatan throughout the game. So every time Zlatan got the ball, Metarazzi went extra hard on him. Zlatan was trying to point it out after the ref, but the ref didn't believe him until Metarazzi went too far and this time he shattered Zlatan's ankle. Zlatan tried to run it off, but he just couldn't man. He was in way too much pain so he had to go off and get substituted. Now, time passed, and while you probably went to play some FIFA or hit the like and subscribe button to Mr. Football to get amazing content, Zlatan tried hard to become a Taekwondo black belt, all because of his special moment. He'd been waiting four years to get back at Metarazzi, so he transferred to AC Milan in 2010, and when he finally got the perfect chance in the Milan Derby, Zlatan made him pay. Ouch, there's no way Matarazzi could have come out of that feeling, okay? Zlatan wasn't even looking at the ball, he just took him out. Matarazzi was taken to the hospital after the game, and the doctors realized he had suffered broken ribs as a result of Zlatan's tackle. Matarazzi later came out to say it didn't hurt him, but come on dude, I saw it, Zlatan had him big time. Now, dudes like Zlatan, they fight with their fists, but for guys like Thierry Henry, they prefer to let their feet do the talking. In the 2004-05 season, Arsenal and Chelsea were the two clubs fighting for the league title. Now, Chelsea's coach, Jose Moreno, he's a savage and he loves playing mind games too. So, just before the two teams met in the huge top of the table clash, Moreno decided to target one of the Arsenal players and get into their heads. So he picked Thierry Henry and took a major swipe at him. Henry only scores for smaller teams, weaker teams. That's how he won the golden boot last season. That was low. Now, Henri could have replied in his own press conference right after, but he wanted to do his talking on the pitch, and in the game, he scored a brilliant goal to help Arsenal to a 2-2 draw. 
and deny Chelsea the win. After the game, Henri was asked to comment about the stuff Mourinho had said about him earlier, and this time, Henri didn't even think twice. Usual, like everyone says, I scored. I always scored in small games, so uh, <laughs> I think today must have been a small game again. Ouch! Talk about leaving Jose red-faced. Jose's comments kind of remind me of the stuff Mbappe said a few months back that made this dish out the ultimate payback. Just before the World Cup last year, Kylian Mbappe came out to give his views on what he thought about the World Cup qualification matches in South America. The football in South America isn't as advanced as it is in Europe. Now, as crazy as this is, Mbappe could have ended the whole thing right there, but he took it up a notch and called out an entire country. Argentina hasn't played games of great quality to reach the World Cup. That's why if you look at the last World Cups, it's always the Europeans who win. Oof, that was a big statement. South American ballers all over the world were calling for Mbappe's head. Now, the reason it was this bad was because the captain of the Argentine national team, Lionel Messi, was also Mbappe's teammate at PSG. So yeah, he was shading him too. Now, Messi didn't say anything about the stuff Mbappe said, and people were wondering why. But at the World Cup, Messi put on a spectacular show to help Argentina make it to the final against Mbappe's France. The match finished 3-3 with a Messi brace and a Mbappe hat trick. But on penalties, Argentina and their goalie had enough nerve to win the match and the World Cup. Mbappe was completely broken after the game, and many people thought it was just because of the match. But he knew deep down that Messi had won the ultimate game, gotten the perfect revenge, and his comments had come back to haunt him. There's something about Messi's name that just gets people talking, man. Like the Armenian guys in 2015. Only this time, they used it the wrong way, and it cost them big time. Armenia was facing Portugal in the Euro qualifiers, and the Portuguese team was stacked. They had ballers like Nani, Ricardo Quasimar, Wahou Modetino, and my boy the GOAT, Ronaldo. See, the Armenian fans knew they didn't stand a big chance, so they wanted to get into Ronaldo's head a bit before the game. So when he came out to warm up, they started whistling and booing him. But Ronaldo didn't budge. He's too big for that. So they started chanting the only name they knew that would get his attention. Messi. 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 It worked. But instead of getting pissed, Ronaldo decided to channel all that energy into his game on the pitch. And by the end of the match, Ronaldo had completely silenced the home crowd by scoring a hat trick. They didn't have a choice but to applaud his game. If only the Atletico Madrid fans had learned from this, they could have avoided the biggest bottle job of their history in 2019. When Ronaldo transferred to Juve, his first knockout match in the Champions League was against his former rivals, Atletico Madrid. Ronaldo had scored tons of goals against these dudes in the past, and coming back with Juve, the Atleti fans were scared, so they doubled up on CR7 during the match and did everything they could to throw him off his game. They even called him names. And it wasn't just the fans, too. Even their coach was in on the action. After the game, the Atleti fans were so confident, they continued mocking Ronaldo, telling him to go back home crying to Turin. And he was finished. It was already getting bad, but Simeon came out and made it worse. I will sell watermelons on the street of Madrid if Juventus do a comeback. At this point, it became personal for Ronaldo. See, he was Mr. Champions League, and it kind of felt like these dudes had forgotten just how good he was. So he needed to remind them that he was the same old guy who scored over 100 goals in the competition, and in the second leg, with his wife and kids watching, Ronaldo went up a different gear. Bang, bang, bang. He legit scored a hat trick to knock Atletico Madrid out of the competition. The Atleti fans couldn't believe it. Even Ronaldo's wife was in tears. And just in case Simeone thought he'd forgotten, Ronaldo so decided to pull out Simeone's celebration as a parting gift. Wonder where Simeone's watermelon shop is in Madrid? Someone get me the address. Now, Ronaldo and Simeone both got fined for the celebrations, but I'm sure I know who'd have enjoyed this one more, and I'd bet you didn't know there's an entire list of banned celebrations in the game. Just click the next video to find out.